Bandia, Portugal. In Portugal, there's a YouTube show full of fun facts you need to know. Carl brings the bell and the members show to the GMP morning show. Featured guests will come and they will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. The little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Good morning, Portugal, and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day. Hey, you gumpers. Hola, bom dia, alegria. Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal show, a live stream and podcast. It uh, seems only a few hours since I was last in this chair. Actually, that's right. I was uh, the thorn among four beautiful astrological roses last night. And um, if you're a Libra or a Leo, you might not want to watch the uh, show that uh, Mrs. M asked me to present last night. A lot of fun. Thank you very much for that. Um, the, the star signs most likely to do X, Y or Z. Um, a bit of quiz, astrological quiz fun uh, last night at nine o'clock. So, yeah, good fun on that. And great to see you, Johnny Cocktail, who's been in town. Great meetup yesterday. Uh, met some new folks. And uh, Johnny Cocktail's been around. Um, and we were hanging out, not up in the sky like this, uh, with the photo that I showed you earlier on this morning as our opening image. This is quite amazing. It's in interesting, isn't it? Looking towards the sun there. Actually, no, looking away from the sun. Um, within minutes, um, I was able to take this picture, and it, it was looking like the sun was setting. It's amazing, isn't it? The angle, the POV, it's all about the POV in life, isn't it? And these are incredible um, paragliders here, and uh, another shot there. They're just hanging in the air, and they were whizzing past us like, woohoo! <laughs> it was great fun. Uh, good to see you, Johnny. Great to hang out with you over the last couple of days. Good to see you too yesterday, um, Steve White, and your colleague Susanna in San Martino de Porto. And uh, Ian and Helena, who were new to the uh, meetup as well. Oh, and Vim and Elizabeth as well, who uh, who popped in to see us yesterday. So a fantastic meetup. And I was, I was a bit torn because people were, were sat all over the deck and in, in, in the um, on the patio area. And we didn't manage to get a big table together. So I was hopping between tables. So sorry if you came and I wasn't able to spend much time with you, but a lovely day for it. Uh, here in San Martino de Porto, and there's always next week. However, next week we'll be in the Storytellers Palace, of course. Um, join us, and Raquel will be there as well. Of course, Raquel was with us yesterday, and she'll be coming and talking more about running a business in Portugal next Wednesday. I'm looking forward to that. If uh, you haven't already RSVP'd, if you're coming in, you haven't already RSVP'd, and you haven't made your order, you might be liking to try the uh, tofu sausage this time. You might not, um, but let me know. If you're having meat, fish, or veggie as your main course. Oh, one more picture. That's That, of course, is Gralia. If you're wondering, Carl, where is that amazing photograph taken? That is um, above Gralia. And uh, the other day when I walked down there with the dogs, that's what it's like. Um, it's completely deserted a lot of the time. A lovely place to have a quiet, com contemplative, and mindful walk. Thank you very much, Mr. James Holly, this morning. And if I take the banner off there, you can see... Uh, some tourists. I think they're stereotypical American tourists, are they not? In Thailand, possibly, at the, um, at the, at the, at the big green Buddha gathering or somewhere like that. Uh, Pete will know. And uh, the American tourist is saying, uh, yeah, hey, you'll never get rich that way, kid. Tossing a bit of change, a bart, throwing a bart into the bowl uh, there in Thailand. Thank you very, very much for that, James. More to come from James a little bit later on uh, this morning. And of course, our, our special guests, Today, our Veronica, a little bit of a rental scam that she's unearthed uh, that we'll share with you before she arrives at nine o'clock. And of course, Carl Hyde, the English gentleman, the British gentleman in Lisbon, joining us at 9.30 with a showcasing a fabulous property. So looking forward to seeing our friends from the Algarve and the capital uh, later on. And uh, Jones Travellers, hello. Good morning to you. Lovely to see you here, Jones Travellers. A great pick of Carl and John. It was this one. People say, John, that's um, that's Michael Palin, isn't it, with Carl there? No, that's Johnny Cocktail um, right there. And good to see you, the Joneses. Excellent. Yeah, we did talk about you briefly uh, whilst Johnny was here. 
Uh, thank you for saying hello this morning. Okay, let's go back to the beginning this morning. No, not the beginning of time or evolution, but 7.49 this morning, which some, it depends if, you, how, if you're feeling like uh, I was feeling yesterday morning, it was feeling like the beginning of time after hanging out for an evening with Johnny Cocktail. Oh my goodness, it was um, quite the struggle. I hope that wasn't too evident yesterday, um, doing the show after um, quite a lot of wine. I don't drink quite as much as that ordinarily, Johnny Cocktail. Bon dia, then at 749 this morning. And actually, yes, talking of this morning, we might have Marion Guerre tuning in, just testing her connection from Chi China. Um, she is over there in China with her Qigong master, and uh, she intends to join us from for Chill Out Tuesday next Tuesday. I think that's when that's next happening, isn't it? Uh, when Sarah Davy joins us from Spartan FX. Let's have a look. Yes, Chill Out Tuesday. We'll have Marion uh, coming in, linking up live from China. Uh, Aoife will be joining us and Sarah, and maybe our friend Sandra as well, who's coming from Belgium. Um, to do a special um, workshop um, in Lisbon. So we'll chat with the four of them. And um, who was that? Oh, that's uh, Veronica just joining us. Yeah, so Marion might be uh, tuning in from China um, this morning as well. Bom dia, Campos. Feliz Quinta todos from... Oh, yeah, the slug is beautiful. Thanks, Yellow. He also sent me this, which I need to get on our sound effects board. hoo Hua! I love that movie. I love that moment in the movie. Um, what a wonderful song. Hua! <laughs> Isn't that great? That's a sound that you didn't know you needed that before that film came out. And now I find it difficult um, to, to imagine life without that, that particular sound uh, from Al Pacino there. Superb. Scent of a woman. Hua! Um, mindful moment then from... Oh, this is good because it chimes with my... Fill my cup this moment. A fill my cup moment this morning. Phil Cooklin, of course, um, is sending messages, messages out to his Fill My Cup crew. And it was about worrying this morning. Uh, Wiz Khalifa says, worrying is stupid. It's like walking around with an umbrella waiting for it to rain. Oh, and the quote that Phil mentioned this morning, I think it's Tom Hanks in a movie talking to a Russian spy. Are you worried? Would that help? That's um, a classic line that uh, Phil was talking about this morning. But I don't want to give too much away. If you can, you can subscribe to Phil's Fill My Cup service. And I think fillmycup.com, P-H-I-L, however. Wonderful. Wiz Khalifa there. Worrying is stupid. It's like walking around with an umbrella, with your umbrella up, of course, waiting for it to rain. Um, that's intense worry, isn't it? When you've actually got the, the, the umbrella erected um, and uh, just in case it rains. After visiting the U.S., a Tibetan, a Tibetan monk. Now, a Tibetan monk made the mistake of meditating on his flight home. He transcended to another plane and elder, ended up in Albuquerque. I know how to say that, James, but thank you very much, uh, Albuquerque. I think we had um, Prefab Sprout recorded a song with Albuquerque in, didn't they? That's how we know how to say that um, in the United States. Coach Turner was in at 7.51. Hola y bon dia, meus amigos uh, y feliz quinta. A morning of walking coffee and paperwork doesn't happen often but needs must yes I imagine that takes you back to what Tavito Costa was saying on Monday the thoughts and the feeling around paperwork feelings 10 times stronger than thoughts God's God tip of the day what sort of sport would be good for meeting people as well as being active tiddlywinks there are many walking groups now that vary. Ah, yes, walking groups are great, aren't they? And a lot of Portuguese cameras actually have official walks around the town that start from outside the camera. So that could be quite useful here if you're in Portugal. There are many walking groups now that vary from a local wander around town to hiking the Camino. Uh, so that might be a good place to start. Or a running club if they finish at a coffee shop or a pub, of course. Um, but there's also lots of team sports as well. Walking football is becoming a thing, or netball, or basketball. Or have you thought about rowing? Is that rowing or rowing? R rowing probably is quite good for developing mental acuity, not so much physical. Um, that can be part of your, that can be part of a squad or on your own. Ah, oh, rowing actually out on the water. If you live in Coimbra, you'll be able to do that. That's where I've seen the most boating. Uh, or getting out on the water is in Coimbra, or how about on the Mondego there, it's a beautiful site, or how about a dance group? Yes, dad dancing, men's ballet, I think we're on for that. Bobby O'Reilly was very hesitant though, wasn't he, 
um, when I mentioned it to him. Lots of choice. What might suit you? Thanks, coach. Anna Bondia, coach from James. I could add birding groups, basically walking with binoculars, really heavy binoculars if you want to work out, yoga, Pilates uh, classes, Zumba or other dancer size groups. And following the theme of your slow sports, how about roll ball? That's slow, <laughs> slow dodgeball, not as lethal. Um, in fact, he's just invented that one. But that would be great to see um, old Giffers uh, sort of shuffling about, avoiding a slowly rolled dodgeball. I'm taking them back to memories of copying that one in the face, side on, for, out of left field, dodgeball. I think we called that murder ball uh, for obvious reasons um, in the UK. And I got the feeling that our, our PE teachers, PT teachers, PE teachers, gym teachers, when they were bored and wanted to just liven things up, they would just get a massive medicine ball out and say, OK, murder ball, everyone, blow the whistle. And it was complete carnage um, in the gym. Um, you, Young boys crying and bleeding everywhere. Bon the Agri Gumbas, look! T Duck is here. Um, excellent to see you this morning, T Duck. Bon the Agri Gumpers, and igualment to you. Oh, and look at this. Love the Carl M article um, in the Resi this morning. So, Reese on the Resi, um, Resi this morning, and the Bond themed headline. Now, I'm going to go to the Portugal resident because over there, and I'll have a quick look um, quite vainly, um, not vainly as in weekly, but vainly as in because I'm going to search myself on the Portugal resident to find out what um, Paul is talking about there. I think it is my Shagered Not Stirred article. I've dared to write a political article and standing by for the blowback um, on that. But let's go over to the Portugal resident uh, so that we can share with you the fact that um, Portugal officially has a new prime minister. Uh, you can chuck this into the conversation now that you know who the new prime minister is. It is, of course, Luís Montenegro. Um, who has been officially appointed Prime Minister, and he's on his way to Brussels. Well, there you go. That tells you about how power works in Europe. No sooner the Prime Minister of Portugal, we find out where his political allegiances and um, a sense of importance lies. He's on his way to Brussels. New government to be presented March 28th. He's going to go and get his orders, isn't he, from Ursula von der Leyen, I think. Um, takes office April 2nd, the carefully chosen um, April 2nd and not April 1st for the new Prime Minister, in a flurry of late-night activity, Portugal's political future was a officially uh, decided, and in inverted commas, officially decided there. Thank you, Natasha Don, for this reporting this morning, actually, published this morning. Um, PSD president and leader of AD, not to be confused with ADN, as some people um, were, 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 were doing last uh, the week not last Sunday, but the Sunday before, um, ADN were a, a, a um, more of a were they a what they were they were I think they were described as extremists because they dared to step. Oh, actually, I can see why they're being described as extremists. Here's a poster of theirs, um, actually, that I want to show you. There was some confusion. So AD um, was the Democratic Alliance. ADN. I'll have to come back to telling you more about what that stands for and um, what it's. What, what they're about. And maybe we'll get somebody from the party um, on the show at some point because they're one of these fringe parties, um, an outlier politically uh, here in Portugal. But this is one of their big billboards that they um, have had up in um, in Lisbon uh, just recently. Then uh, this is ADN and uh, they're saying they're calling out the climate hoax. Uh, carbono, carbon is life. And um don't what is this? Don't talk about the climate fraud here, the frauda climatica. And um, you've got, I think, a picture of a Frisian cow that will be a Maliadinha um, passing wind on the 2030 agenda uh, logo there, um, letting Polly out of the cage onto uh, showing what uh, are they? they they're, they're, that's what they're called Alternativa Democratica Nacional, the democratic alternative, um, not to be confused with AD. Um, who are, of course, the party of the new prime minister. So let me tell you uh, more about him then. Um, that will be Luis Montenegro, of course, off to Brussels. And uh, we have, it's been officially decided the PSD president and leader of AD, Luis Montenegro, was appointed prime minister. He is now en route to Brussels for an audience with European Commissioner Ursula von der Leyen. He has a week to present his new government uh, to President Marcelo, and the plan is that this will then take office on April the 2nd. Reasons for the delay stem from the time it has taken to count votes from the emigre constituency 
oh, sorry, excuse me. And uh, I've discovered last night, um, I, I, I saw on my, on my YouTube feed that uh, Andre Ventura of Shaker was being interviewed by Nigel Farage. Birds of a feather, some might say, sticking together there. And the two seats that were um, as yet uncounted until recently, uh, this is the Portuguese people living outside of, of Portugal with a vote. Those two seats went to Shaker as well. So that's taken them to 50 seats uh, in the Portuguese parliament. Um, so that's part of the delay. Um, that was the counting of votes from the emigre constituencies. The fact that political issues in Madeira have also to be sorted. A further story to come on that from Natasha and the arrival of the Easter holidays, of course. We're getting our priorities right here. The results of the emigre votes were delayed by their sheer volume. So a lot of um, votes coming in from Portuguese abroad. The, this latest election has been unprecedented in so many ways, essentially in the fact that not only national citizens, but emigres too, have thrown their lot in with a new party, a right-wing party. Those on the left will say uh, an extreme right-wing party. Nicely put uh, there, Natasha Shega. Shega won two of the emigre seats in Parliament, one for the European circle, the other for the non-European, oh, the circle of European trust there in Portugal, taking the number of Shega MPs sitting in Parliament from April the 2nd to 50. AD, the Democratic Alliance, not to be confused with the Alternativa um, Democratic Party, uh, but uh, the alliance involving the PSD, the CDS, PP and PPM, led by Luis Montenegro, has ended up with 80 MPs winning only one of the emigre seats. The Socialists have 78 winning another. So not much in it. 80, 78 and 50 now. Outgoing Prime Minister Antonio Costa in Brussels on a whistle-stop round of finan final meetings. Interesting, isn't it? All heading to Brussels. Um, with dignitaries over there, has congratulated Mr. Montenegro and assured best cooperation in the handing over of various political dossiers. Wow. <laughs> I was going to say stuffed with notes. But no, that would be scandalous um, and naughty. And I would never say anything like that. OK, so there you go. We, um, it looks like officially we have a prime minister here in Portugal. Very good. OK, thank you very much for that, Natasha Don and the Portugal resident. Oh, yeah. And I was going to have a quick look, um, if you'll permit me to do so. Um, I think my article's been published. I'll go and get it from the shop. I like to get a paper copy to leave to my grandchildren one day. Uh, my, my Portugal, re there's granddad's Portugal resident columns. Oh, what do we do with those? I, I can't see that. Oh, you must have the paper copy then, Paul Reese. I'll go and get mine a little bit later on. Okay, let's move on then. And uh, yeah, celebrating. Do we celebrate the fact that we've got a new prime minister? Anyway, you've got a new prime minister. Bora da Portugal! Bora da Portugal! Can we have you shouting that in Wales, please, Pedder? Bom dia todos. And Michael Barton, you know, he, of course, legendary bellower of Bom dia Portugal! Bom dia Gumpers. Pam's in as well. Morning to you, Pam. Dancing is excellent exercise. And great for meeting people as you bump into them and spill their pint. No, it's not uh, UK, it's Portugal. There are some expat ballroom dancers here in Lisbon. Ooh, bags of ballroom, my dancing trousers. Why are they your dancing trousers, Carl? Because they've got bags of ballroom. Um, thank you, Jones Travellers. They're literally just lolled with the roll ball imagery. Well done, Carl. hoo um, Are you punking me, son? hoo uh, Bon dia, Atorosh. It's like he's in the room, isn't it? And uh, from Antonio F. Antonio, you legend, thank you very much for being here. Oh, about the um, street billboard, Dij now, a fraud carbonica. Um, say no, there you go, say no to uh, climate fraud there. Thank you very much for that translation. And Sarah Yerman is in Bon dia. And oh, and um, there we go, Bon dia, Antonio, in big capital letters. Right, I'm going to play a video for you. This is a, a rent scam that's happening, yes. Sadly, here in Portugal, and uh, Veronica will talk more about it when she arrives. But uh, check this out for a moment, if you will. Something to be watching out for if you are looking uh, to sign up for a rental here in Portugal. Hello, it's your American in Portugal, and I'm sharing bad news about a rental scam. In the world of real estate, there's a saying that goes, caveat emptor or buyer beware. But it's not just buyers who need to tread carefully. Renters, too, must navigate the treacherous waters of real estate with an abundance of caution. Recently, a major rental scam was unearthed in Greater Porto that served as a sobering reminder of this very fact. In a report by Idealista, it was revealed that 12 individuals were arrested for conning more than 200 unsuspecting foreigners looking to rent homes. 
The suspects cleverly impersonated property owners, showed temporarily rented properties to the victims, and then pressured them into paying deposits that went up to a staggering 2,400 euros. Their operation was so sophisticated that they were able to amass around 250,000 euros before the authorities intervened. The police managed to seize phones, computers, and bank data that were all instrumental in the execution of this elaborate scheme. Dubbed as the ghost rent operation, this nationwide scam is still under investigation. The authorities have issued a warning to renters, advising them to be vigilant and look for certain telltale signs that could potentially indicate a scam. For instance, if there are towels, manuals, and entry codes present in the property, it could signal that it's a short-term rental scam. In conclusion, it's crucial to exercise caution when renting properties. With scams becoming increasingly sophisticated, it's all the more important to stay vigilant and informed. Remember, if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. So, don't rush into any decisions. Always do your due diligence and never let your guard down. Because in the world of real estate, it's not just the buyer who needs to beware, but the renter too. And remember to only use a trusted professional by a very good referral source that you trust. Well said, absolutely brilliant there. Um, well, it's a little bit sad that that's going on, uh, but thanks for bringing that to our attention, Veronica. And I'm sure Veronica will tell us more about that. Operation Ghost Rent, I think it was called, scamming. Uh, I, I guess it's the, the 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 cost, the price of popularity, isn't it? And people seeing an opportunity to rip people off uh, with so much demand for rental properties and people basically being so desperate. So thanks, Veronica. Speak to you soon in a few minutes. This is lovely, Pam. I featured in the local newspaper last week, the lovely Tony asked them to publish a message to me for our 10th anniversary. Put a bench on that 10th anniversary, uh, Pam. And isn't that lovely? If you've got a picture, send us a picture. Um, I imagine they, if I was the editor of the paper, I'd want a picture of you both um, with, that would go alongside the message from Tony there. How lovely um, is that? Erica Kay, Veronica is an awesome immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> an interesting turn of phrase um an awesome immigrant uh, this uh, this today's awesome immigrant award goes to veronica then as nominated and seconded by me uh, thank you very much eric k thank you for tuning in this morning and uh, hola bon dia tia filomena is here hola bon dia alegria parabéns hello um your 10th anniversario um what would that be there's what is the word, uh, the 10th the there in Portuguese? Could we have that, please, either Antonio or Philomena there? Um, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, forgive me for not knowing that. And, uh, yes, we're trying to find out if the Joneses, we're trying to keep up with the Joneses literally here. Um, and it's interesting that we should have Lisbon and Algarve on the screen this morning because I'm not sure there are rumours about the Joneses who once upon a time, do you remember, Trevor, um, when we had the um, head-to-heads of the regions of Portugal, um, Trevor, forever Lisbon, I thought, and I'm hearing perhaps a move. I don't know. Are those rumours true or not, the Joneses? Uh, do you wish to say um, in the chat or are you going to keep everybody guessing? Um, and Antonio, I think Antonio is quizzing um, Trevor and Shannon this morning in the chat. Fantastic. Um, yes, lots of a a talk chat between the Joneses and Antonio F there. And bon dia, uh, Lady Felomina Pasquale. And um, Brigadon Veronica, there you go, uh, Brig oh, Brig oh, Brig oh, um, Veronica for helping us obtain a rental in VRSA. It's official, they are moving south then from the capital. Wow, decimo the 10th. Thank you very much for that, Philomena. There you go. Uh, thanks to Veronica then, the awesome immigrant um, who helped obtain a rental in VRSA. They're heading to VRSA. Amazing. We had such a good time with everyone at lunch. We look forward to being part of the VRSA community. Hey, some people will be thinking, does that mean there's a rental just come on the market in Lisbon then? Put us down for that, uh, the Joneses. Uh, I've just sent the audio for 10th. Thank you very much indeed. That's Look at that. No sooner asked than supplied by Philomena. Let's, let's have a listen. Parabéns pelo décimo aniversário, Pam. Décimo aniversário there. Thank you so much. Décimo aniversário. 
the casamento of now um casamento does that mean window as well as um marriage i wonder and what's the origin of that i'm doing a very quick uh translation on that oh, i guess portello is what why is it casamento why is that to do with house casamento uh, there, I wonder. It's really giving giving Philomena and Antonio F a lot of work to do this morning. Um, and good to know. Thank you, Veronica. Um, the Joneses are leaving Lisbon and, and heading to VRSA. And good to know. Thank you, Veronica. I'm sure for the uh, rental scam uh, story there as well. Thank you very much indeed. What um, interesting news. Um, the Joneses. So tell us a bit more about your, if you don't mind, um, your move to um, to uh, the south, away from the capital there, um, if you don't mind giving us a bit more information, because it is our day when we have representatives in both parts of the country uh, that obviously have their attractions. But of course, you know, it's an individual matter. What is it that people specifically like in either the capital or in the south? Casamento, marriage, wedding. Yep, yeah, uh, forgive me. I, I was going off on, on that meaning window for some reason. That, that of course, is not true. Um, but casa, um, casamento, to do with the house. You know, this is the making of the home, is it? The marriage, the wedding, the casamento. Uh, very good. Thank you very much for that. Um, to marry is casar. Okay, marriage is casamento. There you go. It's definitely to do with the house, though, isn't it, with casa? Uh, and both Antonio F., and Philomena um, are telling us more about this. Casar is the verb. Casar say is to get married. Fantastic. Um, yes, travel is reasonable now. Is this more coming in from the Joneses than yeah, window is general. I don't know why I thought Casar. I think casement. That's why I was thinking that. I think casement is a type of window, isn't it? Anyway, don't worry about all of that. I'm sorry if I've confused anyone this morning, but that's not unusual, is it? Let's face it. Uh, window is general. Extra vocabulary for you there this morning from Tia Philomena. Thanks from Pam as well on the um, anniversary best wishes there. And yes, what's this? Uh, travel is reasonable now, and we are using our Ready Specials account. Co uh, we had a, a chat about that yesterday. And um, there is a little bit of a, a hump to get over, isn't there? When I think you tell Americans about traveling by coach here in Portugal, the coaches are superb in Portugal. Not always the case, I think, in the US and UK. So there's a little bit of a cultural shift to make on that. A uh, Janela is window. Maybe it's Casamento because you're establishing a household. So there you go. We're getting to the bottom of that uh, linguistic forensics there. Thank you very much for your help on that, Pam. Much appreciated. It's nine o'clock. It is time to bring American in Portugal, Veronica, onto the screen. Nice big round of applause. Here she is. Hello. Hello. Bom dia. Bom dia. Tudo bem? Como estás? Como estás? Sim. <laughs> muito, bem, muito bem, muito bem aqui, muito bem aqui. Tudo bem, é tudo? Muito bem, muito bem. And there you are, I think that, that signifies you are back in VRSA that the Joneses are talking about. Back from the Far East, well and truly, how was it? It was so fabulous. Oh, I loved it so much. Vietnam, who knew? Well, a lot of people know because I went out with my neighbors. They're like, we've been there many times. You start right. talking to people and they're like, oh, we've all been there. Like, okay, nobody told me. Oh, I see. Okay, so first time for you, and you're delighted, blown away by the sound of it. Sorry? You, you're delighted by being in, in, in Vietnam. Absolutely. It was yeah. really special, and I think um, there's, you know, so much culture and so much to see and do, and uh, the prices are really great, too. I mean, for mm. those on a budget, wow, you can get beautiful places at great prices, and um, they've really come into their own. You know, Thailand's growing up. He's getting a little too big for me. Cambodia was <laughs> spot on. Yes. Wow. Very, very interesting. And how much is a pastel donata there? Only kidding. Only kidding. You know, <laughs> actually, I have to interrupt <laughs> you because there is an entire Portuguese town in Thailand. Because no. they helped build and develop uh, Th Thailand in Bangkok. So there's a whole Portuguese area. There's a Portuguese museum. It talks about them helping build um, Thailand and some of the words. I mean, obrigada from even you know other parts of the of the east. And then they did have pastel de natas and all kinds of cool things. So if you're yeah, around yeah. around the Hilton on the Chao Praia, go check out the Portuguese town. It's an actual Portuguese town. Incredible. So here you are joking. It's true. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm first. My first um, reaction is to be very surprised. My goodness! And then you think, okay, well, yeah, of course, the Portuguese have been everywhere in the world. So yeah. uh, when you think about it, not so surprising after all. And even a Portuguese museum, 
um, over there. Incredible. Wow. All right. Well, here you are. We're well and truly back. Um, I think you're finding the weather a little bit more manageable. It's fair to say. Oh, my goodness. You know, I have to say kudos, Portugal. I love you <laughs> because no matter where you travel, and that's my thing. I love, love, love to travel. When you come home, it's truly home. I mean, yes. the the walkability, the weather, the friendliness, the tribe we've built here. This is home. I mean, I love California. I love going back. But again, like you've heard me say many times, it's a land of strip malls and housing developments. You've got yeah. to drive everywhere. And yes. to have this, I mean, we walk everywhere. We call this the 10-minute town because everybody can get to the square or from one side of the town to the other in about 10, okay, maybe 15 minutes, depending on your your height and your your speediness, but yeah. 10 to 15 minute town and we don't drive. I have a car, yes. but it's for the big shopping trips or travel. Other than that, it's walking every day and we can imbibe and drink and not worry about it when we walk home because of the safety factor. How so. wonderful, which is one of the reasons I suspect why the Joneses um, have uh, spotted here. Look at this documentary evidence. There they are um, <laughs> at, at a recent meetup in VRSA. That's amazing. And some of their own commentary about this uh, coming in as well. We fell in love uh, with VRSA, with the ferry to Ayamont and the short walk through the pines to the lovely beach. Look at this. Uh, Veronica helping us find a perfect apartment and meeting the expats at lunch. Put us over the edge towards VRSA. Look at that. The VRSA effect. It's worked on the Joneses, as I'm sure it is with many other people as well, Veronica. Well, to be fair, poor Poor Trevor. He was like, can you help me maybe find rentals? And I'm like, I don't do rentals. I hate rentals. Rentals, you know. <laughs> I know then. <laughs> and I even told him there's not a lot. And we try to keep as many as we can for the expats that are buying so we don't flood the market with renters because that's a problem they have here is rental prices. And the people here have to live. You know, this, this we have to be aware that if you're going to rent forever, that you're taking up a rental forever if your intent's to eventually buy here which I'll also talk about because buying long-term, you're going to make money. I've already made 150000 for living here. It's paid my yes. living expenses, the equity in my house. So um, they weren't completely, we're never going to buy, but they're like, for now, we're just renting forever. And they said they were looking at one at Casella, Villanova di Casella. And I kind of went, oh, okay, I have to help them. <laughs> I said, you know, I, I said, Oh, Let okay, me check with then. a friend and I check with the friend. She happened to have two rentals and those are longer term rentals and people have left. So they got lucky. They had the choice of two. They fell in love with one. I actually never met them. I don't charge for this. Um, and I never met them. And then we were going to have a meetup and they magically appeared like, and it was a small meetup. It was just going to be a small lunch with some of my inner circle friends. And mm -hmm. they show up and I'm like, are you kidding me? This was meant to be. You reached out, you got the rental, the one they looked at, Casella, Vela, uh, they were like, no, 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 no. Um, and they they saw it, fell in love with it. And then I can help them because I know the owner, she's rented to many people, which is I want to go into later with rental safety and even purchase safety um, for topics today. Uh, but it's nice to be able to just say, hey, here's the person we know and trust them. Many people have rented from them. We know they own the, you know, own the building. It's been their mother's house forever. These are important things to consider then when just walking to some up to someone you don't know that says, hey, I have this rental. And then you've really got to do your due diligence. So mm -hmm. everything worked out for them and they were so cool. Everybody loved them. They're meant to be here. They're part of the tribe like that in minutes. You know, it's funny. But yeah, you get green lights. Don't you? I was talking to, to a couple about this yesterday at our meetup. In, it's meetups all over the place. Look, Pam, uh, we had a busy meetup in Alcabasta this week. People were encouraged by the very traditional Portuguese bagel. Thank you for that, Pam. Oh, and um, oh. yes, yesterday in San Martino de Porto. But this thing about when, when you get green lights, you get the signs from the universe, don't you? It'll look, well, okay, mm -hmm. this is a go. And sometimes the opposite happens, doesn't it? It's like you, you're just not getting any satisfaction or or encouragement from the cosmos. Um, and you think, okay, well, maybe this now is not the time or this isn't the place. But then sometimes you have to go with it when it happens in the way that you're describing there. Excellent stuff. It um, was meant to be. I have to continue yeah, on yeah. with what you're saying. It was meant to be because I got that little zing in my head. Yep. Hey, you can't let them look at that reach out to your friend. And I followed up on it because many times I think we get messages and we don't, we just kind of let them go. And that was a pretty clear message. Hey, reach out to Susanna, see if she happens to have something. She had two, they loved it. And then to have them just 
show up of all the different restaurants you could go to that they were there. I was even meeting Tracy, Tracy from oh, yes. yeah, Tracy. Yeah. I'm sure she's here, but she does text, text. Okay? Good morning, Tracy. And, <laughs> Good morning, Tracy and Bobby. Um, she says she watches on her TV a lot, so she doesn't text, but text. I said, get on your phone. Um, and um, I was meeting her early and they had just showed up right as we were setting up the tables for the meetup. And, I, and they're like, are you Veronica? And I'm like, yeah. I said, come on, sit down. And everybody fell in love with them. So Excellent. Great stuff. Okay. But it's the universe. Yes. I'm listening to those signs. Because if yeah. I didn't listen, they'd be at some icky place. Wow. So the, the, if we have the head-to-head -head, um, representing the Algarve soon, I think it might be Trevor, uh, formerly of Lisbon, and now representing Algarve, in any, of having fallen in love with VRSA, representing the Algarve in any um, head to head battles to decide the best place to live um, in Portugal. I haven't done that for a little while. Um, okay, that's that's great news. And not so great news was the rental scam uh, you were talking about. We're saying right. good morning to Kiso Coins this morning and to Yipma Baruya, who I, I hello, Jim. Oh, okay. So you know who that is. Um, and Larry as well is also here. Good morning, Veronica. Hi, Larry. Hello, hello. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. We have to get together. I forgot. I'm sorry. They asked to reach out. And okay. yes, let's get well, together. A nice, nice reminder there. Uh, a definite VRSA in the house this morning. And hi, hey, Carl. guys. Okay, so for sure, let's do a meetup in the next day or two. Just casual coffee. There you go. That's for the Palmers. I think attention the Palmers, that particular memo there. Um, so yeah, this rental scam, not so great to see that, but thanks for letting everybody know about it. Well, I think it's really an important reminder. And this happened when as soon as I came back and I'm going through all my emails and checking out what's happening. Um, you know, I'm seeing some bad news. Um, one gentleman said, Hey, you know what? Um, I reached out to the finance guy and, you know, he charged me for fiscal representation when, um, he couldn't provide it because the term was over. And it just was a reminder to communicate. Like, I think we think that our professionals, because we've hired them, read our mind. And so you have to, you know, have your, whether it's your financial professional or lawyer, you have to stay in touch with them with your needs because they are not watching your financial professional isn't logging on every day to see if you've gotten your residency or hasn't. Um, it's your responsibility to reach out to them and to say, hey, here's what's going on. Here's what my needs are. Maybe have quarterly meetings, especially if you have capital gains or anything that may affect you. Because I'm hearing after the fact, oh, we moved here and now we're reaching out to our professional professionals and they're getting hit the capital gains there and here and it's like well you have to do this before you move you yeah. know make your plan do everything you can to maximize your money and people are kind of putting the cart before the horse and yes. yeah, it yeah. needs to be one here and one there use carl's use mine i don't care i don't get referral fees and i think that was a little hurtful they said well you're getting referral fees i don't i don't get yeah. referral fees from my lawyer from my um um cpas I didn't even get any from like rentals. I just, I just do it to be kind. Mm -hmm. And with um, this rental, I have to say, thank you very much, Trevor. They, they, they bought my lunch, Trevor snuck away and bought <laughs> my lunch. So that's very kind. Yeah. That, that was nice and thoughtful. So thank you for that. Um, but you know, many things we do from our heart. And so sometimes you get a little reminder to remind everybody else, use your heart and use your brain to, set these appointments, depending on what your financial situation is. And don't forget to ask, what else do I need? I think the Portuguese aren't always, um, again, reading your, your mind. So if you're having maybe your hour financial consultant and say, hey, you know, what else will I need? What, you know, for what should I prepare for, for my next quarterly meeting? And here's what's going on in my life. Mm. So that way they're aware and can, it can best help you. Yeah, right. Uh, double check. Don't make assumptions. Mm -hmm. Double check and get some uh, third party help. You can't you can't ask too many people in many ways, can you? Just to just to make sure you've included that thing that you had no idea you needed to include in the first place. So right. um, great, great advice. What else do I need to know? Important yes. question in Portugal. Right. And you don't what know what you don't know. So that's why you have to keep asking those questions. The meetups are important. The online forums. Although, you know, we, we recommend those, don't we, with some hesitation, Veronica. Um, you can get information overload and some seriously bad info uh, in social media. But, you know, I think uh, when all said and done, just enter into those environments. Um, again, caveat emptor, be careful. But there, there can be some useful information in there if you uh, were a, 
crash helmet and knee pads and that uh, for your emotions. <laughs> helmet and knee pads. But yes. to the point, don't crowdsource your own financial plan. Everybody's is different. Yes, well said, yeah. You know, yeah. or even your legal needs. I don't know what your legal needs. I mean, everybody is so different. There is no cookie cutter for everybody. You might be selling stocks and bonds or a house. You mm. might have a business. You might, things that you need to do before you move here, especially now that there's no NHR. Or you kind of could have oopsed with that with NHR and said, <laughs> oopsie, then you have some capital gains issues. And in America, you'll get taxed in both places. So you yes. have to be careful with capital gains. Um, you know, income good pensions point. are different, but. Hmm? Yeah, good point. There are some things that you should crowdsource. I mean, getting general, general information is OK, but eventually, yeah, work with a trusted professional uh, who's going to dot the I's and cross the T's. Excellent. And um, Pam saying, I think it's sometimes hard for people to identify who is trying to make money out of them and who is acting out of a genuine desire to help. That's life advice, isn't it? <laughs> really as well. I think that's truly an international and uh, human nature thing there as well, Pam. Well said. Well, you uh, can always ask, are you getting um, well, commissions? Yes, for this? Are you getting referral fee? And it's okay for people to get referral fees and just disclose because in real estate we do, you know, we passed I passed on a lead to Carl, other Carl that'll be coming on soon. He got paid. He said, oh, I want to give you some. But it was, it's such a pain to fill out the green receipts and in rentals, there's no money. I said, no, no, no. Take Go to Carl. You'll see him in person. Buy him drinks. It's easier yes. than doing all that stuff for like, you know, a couple hundred bucks. It's just not that, Do you know what? That's a cultural <laughs> difference. Because I think, in, we, we again, this is another subject that came up at the meetup yesterday. Um, somebody said, uh, oh, yeah, you put somebody in touch with me because because this there was one chap who was thinking about buying a house in the street of, and he'd be his neighbor basically in, near me and here in San Martino de Porto. And uh, we were having conversations with each other. And he said, oh, yeah, I think this chap came over. I think he came from you. And he was asking me um, about my place, what it was like to live there. And do you know what? This is British, uh, by the way, Veronica. He asked me how much I paid. It's like, how very dare he? We don't do <laughs> things like that. I nearly spat my tea across the room. I nearly spilt my Marmite. And it, it's like asking people, you know, UK people what, what they earn. People just don't disclose that sort of information or talk about it openly as perhaps they might do in the US. And these things are a matter of record, aren't they, in some parts of the Internet? If you have a look, you know, you can see what a house was sold for. Can you not? Well, I think it's really important that we do share prices of housing because you do have the data. And I was just searching all the data on the statistician sites that the government has, which is great, which the bank provides. And I have data on that, but it was getting to be too much. But I yeah. do have some good charts on what the mortgages are going for and the price per square meter and all of that, which is going up. Right. I mean, I think that's at least a point to make. But we hear from each other. Um, hey, I paid this much for mine and yours. And it helps you establish the correct price so you don't over or underpay because not all agents are good players out there, you know, and yeah. they don't do their homework and they're just trying to sell a house, not really realizing that they don't always have the tools to pull up what the what the local housing um, um, is going for, or if they're selling a developer something development, um, they're going to want to try to get as much as they can. So I think you know back home, at least in California, we're used to what's called a CMA, a current market analysis, which yeah. is run by the title companies, where in seconds the real estate agent has a login, they pull up all the comps within a one mile, two mile, three mile radius. It yes. gives you the true recorded value. It is public knowledge yes. as well as Zillow and all these other apps. So we're used to that. And so it's no big deal to say, oh, I sold mine for 250 or 300. It's just, yes. it's just, it's, it's, it's a number. It's not your personality. Unless you're British and then it might be a little <laughs> bit of life. But this is how much I paid for my house. And it's none of your business. <laughs> Very interesting is it, the cultural differences. But you make a great point. The reason I said that. Um, and, and you cut straight to the chase there. It's sometimes hard for people to identify who is trying to make money out of them and who is acting out of genuine desire to help. And there are shades of grey here. I mean, like right. trying to make money out of them sounds a little bit sort of exploitative. And as you said, there's no harm in people making a living by helping people. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know, this is what the service economy is about. But the yeah. best way to find out, as you say, is to ask, isn't it? And, you know, we, I, I, we, we get referral fees. Um, we get commissions as Good yeah. Morning Portugal. In, uh, and, yeah. and I'm happy to explain to people how and where that happens. So that's a great response to that. Thanks, Pam, yeah. for making that point. And thanks, Veronica, for just saying, 
Just ask, just say to people, what do you stand to gain from helping me? What's wrong with asking that question? Right, right. And if yeah. you're like, hey, yes, I get a referral fee, but it's 10 bucks. They'll be like, okay, clearly you're not <laughs> throwing yeah. away all your morals for 10 bucks. And if you are, yeah, I'm not talking to you anymore. Maybe you're yeah. not my friend. Right. Um, but to realize that, yeah, if people are going to spend time and money and putting out information like you do, how do you fund your family and your um, expenses and your life. And that's okay. It's okay to fund your family. And I think disclosure is just the key to doing it. And um, it's, it's fine. But then that also makes you liable, right? So well, if you sure. say, um, I am doing this, and I take responsibility for that referral, because I'm going to benefit from it. So yes. if that yes. ship goes down, you go down with the ship. And yes. that's why, you know, with lawyers and finance, I don't, you know, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to like give, uh, get any referral fees. It's like, this is between you and them. If you crowdsource basic information, like the gentleman had asked me, hey, do you still use this guy for your financial representation? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to use him as long as he'll let me because yeah. he tells me what I'm doing wrong. Yes. Um, and so he took that as, oh, well, then I can have him as my fiscal representative forever. <clears throat> and I wasn't clear on that. But then you get a little bit of a backlash and go, just talk to them. Just talk to them. Ask just them what they can and can't do for you. I think Maybe it's cultural. I really, I really think it's cultural. The Brits don't like the idea of, of, of exploiting each other for money. It's a cultural thing. It's very interesting. And I think it's very different in the United States, isn't it? You know, people have a very different and open understanding of service culture uh, mm -hmm. in the United States by comparison. Uh, thank you for that, Pam. That's great. And you've got more for us as well. We are so grateful for friends like Veronica, Johnny Cocktail and Mark assisting us in the Algarve last week. Not sure who Mark is, but shout out Who's to Mark. Mark? This morning. Yeah, tell us who that is. Yeah, who's that? Um, and you've got a request here from Facebook user. Hi, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Veronica, please contact me. I think that's Shelly uh, who'd like a call from you as well. Shelly, Shelly. I'm very happy to be your PA this morning. Um, this is this is wonderful. And Erica K saying, I'm, it is so important. I'd love to you this morning, Shelly. Um, it is so important uh, to, and thank you for the links, by the way, to uh, Shelly. It is, it is so important to share prices of housing because there's no MLS in Portugal yet. Otherwise, property valuation is just guessing. So that's a good reason to do that. Morning to the Whitby's. I think we've already said good morning to you, but good morning officially to you, Michael and Catherine. Uh, hey, Jones Travellers, welcome to VRSA and Susanna is a dream landlord. It's getting very personal here um, this morning. Um, everyone deserves to be paid for their work, but there are people out there looking to exploit yes. people, particularly in this field where foreigners come here with a little or no knowledge. Thanks, Pam, for that. And Pamela, uh, to that point, that earlier video, there are scams out there. Be careful. Yes. Yes. Um, use only recommended agents. And if you do go direct to anybody, whether it's a sale or whether it's a purchase, you have got to hire an outside attorney that investigates that they actually own the house. Because yes. people in these scams were just simply getting a long-term rental or they were getting a um, Airbnb, showing people it and collecting all their rental money and then leaving. Then they go to this Airbnb and they're gone. So it's like taking candy from a baby, isn't it? What an incredible... Well, people... Okay, can I, can I say this and be a jerk? Yes. You must set aside funding for an attorney, a CPA on both ends, wherever you're coming from and here, yes. and a CPA or chartered financial, whatever their titles are in your countries. You must do this. And don't just trust that nice person, because guess what? If someone was going to be a scammer, they're not going to pick a troll to do it, right? They're going to pick an attractive, well-spoken person to be their person, to stand in that Airbnb all day long and just give away rental contracts, 2,500, 2,500. Guess what? That's a 10,000 euro day with four people that signed up. So um, if, if you don't have somebody checking who owns the home, which yes. even, I'm sorry, agents, some agents use their in-house one who doesn't do a full vetting. And it just takes one that didn't authorize the sale of that house. Everything could look legit. But let's say you've got 10 brothers and sisters and one doesn't sign off. You don't own the house. Mm, wow. And there has been scams in the Algarve, too, where people show up to their house and someone's in there going, this house was never for sale. Can you imagine? And they bought it. You're outside mm -hmm. with your van full of stuff, and you on yep, the day of the guy from in. Scotland did that, paid cash. 
Oh, my goodness. Um, I heard of that scam years ago in the UK, says Pam. For some uh, reason, people don't expect it here. Yeah, yes. it's, just all, it's all, uh, you know. It's uh, global. Unicorn farts, rainbows, and pastels and arches. <laughs> You've got it. Yes, absolutely right. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. And not jerky at all for saying that. I'm just, just giving it, telling it like it is and, and helping people, basically. Um, so uh, we have also from Pam. Pam, extremely helpful this morning. Thank you very much. There's a house price simulator on the Dutor Finances website. It's a really good source for financial information. Let's show everybody now then. Um, I, think, I think I'd heard of this, but um, here we go. This is like, I guess, the Martin Lewis money-saving expert of Portugal, perhaps, there. Is this a, a third-party organization, Pam, Dutor Finances? It's a separate organization helping people with the many aspects of dealing with the government, uh, taxation, social security, and that sort of thing here in Portugal. Good stuff. Excellent resource. We'll look further into that maybe uh, one morning and have a bit of a deeper dive or maybe even get somebody from that website to join us. Dutor Finances. I'll put the link to that so that people can have a look for that. Very helpful. Uh, both uh, you, Veronica, and Pam this morning. Um, we've also uh, we've got uh, further incoming from uh, here from the Joneses. Mark is Blaze451. I'm still no better off in understanding who Mark is there, but he may may prefer to uh, remain anonymous. Howdy, says YouTube Punk, I think from your community there, from Texas. And Carl Hyde, who you'll see in just a minute. I offer free advice, as I'm sure Veronica does. If you then want to come back and have me represent you formally, great. No pressure, though. If you are being hounded, harassed, or feel pressured, it is not a good sign. Yeah, well said. Um, a guy in ADP, uh, what would that be? Showed me an apartment. Uh, what does ADP stand for? But um, said the receipt would show a different address for his tax purposes. That's a red light, isn't it? Although that does go on here, of course. So do remember that for you to get your um, residency here and you're getting you know, a visa, you need to have a legitimate contract registered with finances. Okay, so it's really important that you get you don't go to these little sneaky. Oh, I'll give you some, pay you some under the table. Well, I guess you could still kind of do that as long as you have the contract. But a contract that has the person's name, and and I even say rental contracts run them through your attorney. And people go, oh, but it's a rental. The average price for a really good attorney to do the full due diligence, not just read your contract, but actually check the documents that they yeah. own the property and that it's paid up and then it's registered, it will cost about one month's rent. That's pretty right. standard. Okay. So to have an attorney for one month's rent keep you completely protected, plus he'll write the contract, or they should, in your behalf, not having it come from the person who's renting to you, which could be in their behalf. Yeah. So um, Tracy and I were just talking about her contract, that if she were to change places, what would happen? and looking through the renter's rights and that if it's just one day short of a year, it's totally different than one year, how much notice you need to give to terminate. I so see. simple things are important to write in there. Very interesting. Uh, very informative this morning. Uh, ADP, of course, is Alma Sandepera. Thank you very much for that, uh, Erica. Question in from YouTube Punk in Texas. I've been out of the loop for a minute. Does Veronica still have that moving guide? Do you have a moving guide? I do, but I need to update it. I have a list, list, list. When I was in Vietnam, I was traveling, but then your brain also goes, oh, I need to do this and this and this and this. Yeah. And so I'm going to get to it. I just came home, not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before. And it's been social stuff. I said, I'm okay. never packing my suitcase again yes. after two months. And I packed it this weekend to go hang out with my Irish friends for St. Patrick's Day and for the Irish games and rugby and all that. So how lovely. Fantastic. Today, yeah. Okay. So um, fun. Oh, hello, Mandy, Laura, all the fun people in uh, Sao Brás de Arcortel and Amundsil. How lovely. You didn't go to Ireland. You went to be in the United States. No. I went to a lot of Irish friends. So it was similar. Excellent. And they, yeah, they the made crack. Bon dia, Malta, from the beautiful Bajada this morning. Good morning to you, Andy, and understood. Thank you. So, YouTube Punk, stand by. There will be an updated version of that. By way of a little aperitif, uh, a Carl Hyde-shaped aperitif, he sent me a video, and we've got some images um, to get to the bottom of from you as well, some random images of old oak. Um, no, not, yeah, so, uh, no, olive trees, not cork oaks. We'll come back to those, but first, a quick video well, from Carl Hyde. Sorry, go on, Veronica. No, no, it was the dolmen that was so cool, the standing stone. Okay, we'll come back to that. We'll leave that mystery hanging there. Yes, okay. 
Okay, so the view from Arawera, just south of Lisbon. I think the last time I was on, it was raining cats and dogs. So four or five weeks later, everything's coming into bloom. Plum tree, beautiful wisteria and jasmine, smells fantastic. Round here to peach tree, which looks amazing when it's in, uh, in fruit, but unfortunately, it's diseased so we can't eat them they just look great and then make a mess when they fall onto the patio area so yeah looking better than it was four weeks ago but still yeah you know we could get rid of those white things in the sky there so it'd be absolutely perfect but still i ain't complaining it's looking good how about that what a difference a month makes um wow. we've got some sunshine there who doesn't like to look at carl Hyde's plums first thing in the morning i know i do um and talking of uh, fascinating images that are being sent in on 913-590-303 what are these in a dolman uh, you say this is the long shot here where were you for this so this was Salbrash de Erpertel and um I went to get um, what you know a local traditional cake for a dinner I was invited to um, at Laura's. Hello, Laura, and happy birthday! Um, and and while I was waiting for her, you know, it was kind of a little factory too. She's putting the finishing touches on the caramel and the nuts. And I see this sign that says, "We have a lovely garden. Please feel free to stroll around the back. Just let the staff nice. know so they'll open the gate for you." I go around the back. It was an amazing garden, but this is a two thousand year old like registered oak tree. And then the dolmen, I'm all into the dolmen, the standing stones. I'm like, okay, that's cool that a bird pooped out a tree and it grew 2,000 years ago. But the dolmen <laughs> humans put up, right? And yes. it's usually in a spiritual place, in a place that usually has water. And it's usually on the um, crossing Teleronic lines. And it's, you yeah, know, yeah. it's all about Portugal and the Templars and all of that. So that's special. It's a beautiful shape, isn't it? It's, yeah, it does it's, look like a penis. <laughs> Not, that's not why I was thinking. That is not why I thought it had some kind of female shape to it. I maybe really? need to get, maybe need to get some glasses. Maybe <laughs> those ink splatter things, what you see. <laughs> well, I don't I know. Let's make, let's that make, that they all look like that, and that's all it was was fertility rates. No, let's make this a test for everybody. And is it what Easy. Veronica said, or is it more of a curvy shape? See, I think that's quite Henry Moore and, and, and female and curvy. Uh, that one there that looks more female from that angle but yes maybe we do go with your um assertion uh, Veronica, well, on, that. on the other one it looks like someone's sitting like cro cross-legged like this on one? the one before the further away one doesn't it kind of look like that's maybe his oh i'm pointing like you can see like that's maybe his behind on the left side there. oh like, yes possibly like, yeah. like yeah. in his head kind of bowed like in some okay sort well, of uh, and I, 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 I say again <laughs> let's leave that hanging there <laughs> Okay, we got we got uh, Carl Hyde joining us in, in just a moment. So, any other um, any other news from the south? I mean, it must be getting really much warmer, brighter. It's oh, officially yeah. spring, isn't it? Are you feeling the influx of of people and energy? It's all coming to life in the Algarve at the moment. Not so much. I would say most of the touristy type people come in um, like June, July, and August. More July and August. Right now, it's still all ours, and it's been many beach days. Many, many beach days. I've been out there with my toes in the sand getting sunburned. So yeah, wow. it's 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 beach days here. Today is a little bit overcast, but it's the rare thing. And yes. it's my fault because I put all the cushions out on my roof. So of course it's gonna rain. And I looked at it, it's gonna rain for like one hour. So I'd have to take all the cushions, put them back in for one hour. I'm not doing it. <laughs> and usually when it says it's gonna rain in the Algarve, it's false news because we need the rain. So we uh, we have okay. in. Do the rain dance. Oh, Moldy pillows can be quite a nice look um, from time oh. to time. Antonio, if it's right, hit that like button, folks. And thank you for your three bells. It's like a fruit machine um, here or the one arm bandit or whatever you call it in the United States. I wonder why she's put that um, on the screen there. Um, thank you, everybody, for your input this morning. It's been a nice, a nice and busy session this morning. And welcome to everybody who's come over from uh, Veronica's channel as well. Thank you very much. Very thoughtful, Veronica, um, sharing our link um, with your community as well. So, so lovely to meet some new people uh, from your community. We've got a property to look at from Carl Hyde, but we won't do that until we've had a chat with him um, and um, found out a bit more of a, a weather report and if things are coming alive in the Arrow era. Um, just south of Lisbon there. Give him a nice big round of applause and bring him onto the screen. Oh, yes, there he is. 
How are you, mate? I'm doing well, mate. I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> Good. And nice to see your the, the change in your weather. It was absolutely peeing it down on a, on a video a month ago. And uh, now you're seeing signs of spring, I would say. Absolutely, yeah. It felt like it wasn't going to end. I mean, we've still got a little bit of rain intermittently, but just uh, having those blue skies and uh, having everything come into bloom. I mean, literally, even just two weeks ago, the trees were bare. You know, some of them are anyway. And then just you go out one day and it's all there. And it really is just... It's, it's a miracle, isn't it? You, you know, it's a reason to be grateful and glad. It's absolutely wonderful. How does it work? It's just wonderful. Yeah. Um, uh, talking of dolmens and standing stones, Antonio F has a similar one in the middle of his 50,000 people town, and it's some 5,000 years old, and another one in the next town. Lots of Can them. Can share that one? 5,000 years old is great. Show us your standing stone, Antonio F. Uh, standing stones, is it yet another Celtic connection? It is, it is. And I described, I was on a call last night with Mrs. M, who we was doing an astrology quiz, and people say, yeah, I want to come to Portugal. And I say, this is, you know, this is like the belly button of the world. I think somebody said that when yes. we were in Tava, Veronica, right? We are the belly button yes. chakra of the world. It's a very spiritual country. So, yes, loads of standing stones, and they are called Anta. Old Dolman. One of those would look Enter. nice in your back garden, Carl. Fancy one of those? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Into place. yeah, it's all new to me, to be honest with you. But yeah, it looks great. All right. <laughs> so what's new, mate? What's new in Lisbon? How are things going? I'm looking at the Portugal news. Property prices peaking. They're always saying things like that. What's your view on the, on the property scene at the moment, especially in the capital? Yeah, well, I mean, it's... Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's very busy. I mean, I don't know about... Um, Prices going down and things like that. I mean, yeah, um, I've got a few clients who are sort of uh, waiting in, in the wings kind of thing, um, thinking maybe they'll wait till later this year or next year uh, <laughs> to buy a place. But as I always say, and I, I sort of, I know it doesn't sound good, but if you're ready to buy, just buy now because I really don't think the prices are going down. So, yeah, the market's busy. It's hotting up. Um, you know, it was a little slower in 2023. We all know that. But uh it's, it's definitely different now, for sure. It's funny, isn't it? People imagine themselves, I think, with red braces on and a bank of screens inside their study and that they're Warren Buffett. It's like, I'm going to wait until this crashes and I'm going to buy it all up. If it's your house, I think both of you are agreed, if it's your house and you want to buy, it's best to get going, right? And not you're not some sort of major investor who's going to clean up from a crash of the property market if it's your own individual dwelling, necessarily. Well, well, well yeah. Stop I mean... climbing the market. <laughs> Yeah, That's I mean, look, in a word. It, it just doesn't see it. I mean, nobody's got a crystal ball. If we did have a crystal ball, then we'd all be billionaires, you know. Yes. Um, but, you know, there are people who are paying, I don't know, 2000 3000 a month in rent, hoping that, you know, purchase prices are going to drop. So you're going to do that for 12, 18 months, which is, you know, to me, it's always dead money renting um, yes. in the hope that the price of the property is going to come down. What actually seems to be happening and has been happening is that the prices are increasing and you're just paying rent still. So for me, I would say if you're ready to buy, just buy. I mean, you shouldn't be buying for the short term anyway, generally. Yes. Yeah. Um, get it done. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well said. Uh, would you want to add to I'm that, Veronica? Don't time the market. Chart. I'm going to send oh, yeah. the chart real quick. Sorry to interrupt. And in a minute, post the chart showing that even with the dips, and this is the chart we always show in real estate, over a 10-year cycle, it always goes up. Like zoom, out, zoom out on those little, you know, peaks and troughs. For yeah, sure. well, you, you you can share that from your end if, if you can see how to do that. This is the yeah. article I was referring to here. Property prices peaking, um, says uh, an article in the uh, Portugal News. A warning has been given recently by the European Commission regarding the perceived overvaluation of property in Portugal, which has now been <clears> confirmed <throat> by DBRS. Ooh, DBRS have confirmed it. Who's that? Uh, when looking at 18 countries around the world, the rating agency concluded that house prices in Portugal grew the most since 2018. 60% up? No. Um, among the 18 economies evaluated in the DBRS report, Portugal stands out as the country where the highest housing appreciation was recorded between the last quarter of 2018. Try telling that to somebody in Evra or Alentejo. And the third quarter of 23, according to a report by Jornal de Negocios, Negocios. Uh, this is because house prices in the country rose by 60% in five years and have now reached their peak. That sounds like a bit of data cherry picking to me. Not every house has risen 60%, has it, in Portugal? No. And they said this last January. In fact, some of the other bloggers that I know, love and trust said, oh, don't buy. The market's about to tank. And people yes. didn't buy and they got hosed. Like 
You can't predict the market. I do not say hosed and set up. That's brilliant. I'll be using that each today. You got hosed. <laughs> you got hosed. Mm, you did. Wow. But I mean, that if people have done this throughout the world of real estate, they Forever, try to right. time the market. Yeah. And we say this, I think, on every show, right, Carl? Yeah. 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 If you can buy now <clears throat> and you're ready to buy, and this is your home for at least 10 years, you should be good, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and again, I've been paid to live in my house. My house has doubled in price in seven years. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've been essentially, if I were to sell today, I could take that cash and go, I lived here for free. Very good. Excellent. Okay. We, we, we've got quite a, a number of levels of conversation. It's like a pantomime here this morning. Dolmen sounds like a very Welsh word. So I had to check it, but it's a cromlech. Yes, they do get called yes. cromlechs here as well, don't they? Um, and Antonio F saying, in reality, the Antosh dolmen look like a house, a shelter. They have walls and a cover while the one shown is a standing rock. So I think the mystery continues as to what their exact purpose might have been throughout the years. But I think fertility is probably quite a good shout on that, Veronica. So, folks, you can ask questions of our, our wonderful friends here in the Algarve and in the capital. What else have you got to tell us from the capital, Carl? We've got another property to show people, haven't we, this morning? Got a great property to show people later uh, later on. Um, we've got uh, – we're opening a new store in um, – in uh, Kashkaj, um very soon, the agency, and uh, I think there are a few others planned as well. So for us, it's uh, it's an exciting time. Um, starting a new business in a in a very tough environment in 2023, oh. things are progressing. So yeah, all's good there. Property wise, it's just it's that time of year. People are starting to move. You know, families are thinking about getting their kids into international schools and all those kind of things. Um, so yeah, it's really it's really cooking at the moment. Wonderful. Okay, Jackie the Humble Crafter is in. And look at this, from Jackie the Humble Crafter to Jack Polly. Hi to Carl Hyde. What an amazing guy. True to his word, you can message him for advice and he will ring you back for a chat. There you go. So you're going to be busy today. <laughs> <laughs> with that with that testimonial. No, I, look, I, do that, I do that all the time. I do yeah. that all the time. If you take five minutes out of your day to give somebody some advice, I mean, it's easy. You know? Yeah, right. No, no, no. Yes. Um, I, well, that's a very kind offer, but buy him lunch or a coffee. Come on. Uh, you can, that's, that's the least you can do if he's giving you some solid advice. Take him out for lunch and buy him a coffee as well. Yes, the property um, shops you're talking about. Well, how did the agency go about opening up a shop? I'm imagining it will be quite high end, a bit like, you know, I can't remember the name of the brand in, in London, but you go in and it looks like a bar as much as it does a real estate agent and you can Foxton's is it and you can have a you know can have something to drink while you're sitting there chatting sounds like, that sounds like a biscuit Foxton's. <laughs> very <laughs> posh, <laughs> very <laughs> posh like alcohol state. with real estate no no okay well you like, what how did how was your day uh i bought a house <laughs> <laughs> so, no. I'm sure that's happened somewhere. Yeah. I was walking down a street, and, I, and there I was um, a few hours later, and I was signing on the dotted line. What's the agency uh, going to look like as, as, as a retail experience? <laughs> a bit special, I would think. Yeah, I mean, I think so. It, 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 it's not easy, you know. I mean, you've got to be you've got to be in the right place, kind of thing. Um, mm. And it is it's kind of a boutique brand, you know. It yeah. doesn't it doesn't just sell boutique uh, brand kind of properties, but uh, yeah, you, you've got to be in the right part of town. And, and like anything, it's location, location, location. So that's not always easy to secure, um, yes. you know, the, the, the best property and the most suitable property for you. Um, but, yeah, we're uh, we're getting there with that. And, and I think it's going to be great. There are going to be stores um, throughout the country, you know, uh, north, wow. south, and uh, in, in, in the capital as well. So it, it's looking good. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not involved in the process, you know. Um, and so for me, it's going to be a surprise as well to see that new store um and and sort of uh be there on a regular basis as well um but we do have headquarters um in Estoril, which is uh an office not far from the casino there very nice great location fantastic you know yes so well, you yeah. know what it means to be in Veronica. That's if there's a number of stores opening up around the country. That means a few opening dues as well, and some more fizz to drink. So excellent. Stick us on the stick us on the list, if you will, Carl Hyde. And look Absolutely. at this. We we can also recommend Carl Hyde uh, was our realtor for our new house. Excellent service, high integrity. I bet you're glad you came this morning, aren't you, Carl? Right. I feel yeah. good. 
<laughs> All right, fantastic. Um, let's bring onto the screen then. We, we're moving from nice mug, by the way. We're moving from the capital, close to me, close to where I live. And um, we, yes, I noticed that, Veronica. <laughs> Have you got a Good Morning Portugal mug? No, you were going to send me one, but I forgot to send my address. So, that or, or Miss M was going to send me one, so I'll send okay. my. Address. We will sort that out. Okay, I'm going to get you. A who doesn't like. First thing in the morning. There you go. Uh, one and of those will be making... them for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> we will we'll make sure you get one of those. All right. On the other side. Well, no, it is double sided. It's very thoughtfully done. Very thoughtfully yeah, done. Yeah, but no, one side would be for coffee. The other would be for the Mumford. I the Mumford. You have a new alcohol drink, right? The Mumford. Oh no, the Munson. The, the Munson. Munson. Why do you say yeah. Mumford? Oh, because you're thinking of Mumford. You're thinking of Mumford and Sons. I think I yes, I'm often getting confused with the Sorry. big rock and roll stars who are Mumford and Sons. Right? Uh, <laughs> no, not at all. Foge de Lelio. This is an interesting looking, uh, a distinctive property. You might say using uh, real estate language. Um, let's. Uh, should we play the VT? Should we roll the, roll the video on this? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Beautiful. Wow. Look at this. Aerial shots. Amazing. But mm -hmm. well, I drove along there. Um, I was showing actually Steve White um, that uh, Boa Vista um, Atlantic Road there. It's a brilliant location. You're you're right there. The the, the visual you could see there was where the um, the Atlantic meets the Obidosh Lagoon. That is a beautiful property. Tell us more about it, please, if you will, Carl. Okay, so this is listed by my colleague on the Silver Coast, uh, Dörte Bremer. Um, fantastic agent, fluent German, Portuguese and English. So if you've got property needs in that area, you can give her a call. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, this place was built in uh, 2022. Um, it's a beautiful place. I mean, you can tell by the, the images there. Um, somebody's given great thought to the, to the design of it. Um, 300 uh, or a little over 300 square meters, T3, two bathrooms. Uh, one of those is an ensuite, as you can see from those images you're showing now. Huge windows, you know. So, I lots love of, that place. Yeah. yeah, lots of natural light, and they're looking out sort of onto the uh, onto the, the, the local countryside, they're not looking out onto your neighbors. So, you've still got a lot of privacy, um, you know, you, just a beautiful space. If you if you saw from the the video as well, it seems like the property at one side sort of um, it, it it goes over kind of a, a natural slope in the ground, um, and they've built a garage into that side. So you've got like a double story garage, um, yeah. you know, like a, I think it's about sixty square meters. You could fit a camper van in there. You know, it's a huge space. So um, great for sort of uh, outdoor living kind of thing. If you you know like outdoor activities and things like that. Well, that's what I'm looking at here. We, we've got yeah. um, this is the study, isn't it? And and, and I, in the video, I was thinking, is that fly fishing or fly fishing equipment there? And maybe they go fishing on the Obidosh Lagoon. This is an outstanding that's place. Right, I yeah. love the architecture yeah. um, of this particular home. It's a great location. Brings back some. Oh, there you go. So there's your massive garage as yeah. well. It's a beautifully made and uh, designed house. Yeah. I've got some bad memories attached to the area. I can see from the aerial shot um that it's very close to a children's playground 
where I went on the zip wire. It's one of those moments, you know, when the dad says to the kids, watch this, kids. <laughs> it, it, it's how um, Dougie broke his hip, <laughs> saying that. Um, I I ended up with blood, uh, I was going to say, pouring from my forehead. That is a little bit of an exaggeration, but I was on the zip wire, and uh, my momentum kind of caught up with me at the other end of the zip wire, and my head crashed against the um, the metal fixing holding the zip wire up. But I, I, I can put that behind me. Um, if I were to move to this absolute dream home, yeah. really, I love it. It's, it's really it's amazing. It's amazing. A, a great piece of land. Uh, I think it's nearly 4,000 square meters. Um, yeah. You know, huge plot. You, there's room to extend. You know, if you wanted more rooms and you wanted more space, then I'm sure you could do that there. Definitely yeah. room for a swimming pool. Yeah. The design's fantastic. And the attention to detail with the property is fantastic too. I mean, you can tell from the images, you know, throughout its high quality you know that's all solid wood flooring in there um yeah. no expense has been spared so a really beautiful place and i wanted to show it today because you know every time i come on the show i want to find something that's interesting to talk about and yeah. i mean i was in Sal san martino de porto just a month ago um for the event at um the storytellers lounge and i drove from san martino to foz do Aurelio, where this property is because my uncle is staying there now he, he sort yeah. of goes to that area once a year and you know, you know the area better than me. It's but it's amazing. I was, I, I, was there a, I was there a couple of weeks ago in that lagoon there. I mean, it's the most incredible place, and the yeah. lagoon stretches far inland. Yeah. Um, and uh, you've got Caldas Gelenia not far away, uh, as you say. You can go on the coast road and drive back down to San Martino de Porto, get across. You've got to be careful crossing the lagoon. Um, if you don't make it in time, uh, uh, apparently, workers back in the day had to make sure they were on the right side of the water. <laughs> before the tide came in because it would be they would be walking for hours if they didn't make if they didn't make it back in time to the right side of the lagoon after yeah. the water coming and it's a very um dynamic area the water comes in it creates little pools uh, we were having a paddle in there a couple of weeks ago fish get trapped in certain parts of it it's a really special place um yeah. you know in terms of its location and beauty uh, quite frankly dougie i didn't mean that badly but i mean dads do say that don't they watch this kids <laughs> And then next thing you know, dad's rolling around on the floor in agony for one reason or another as he tries to show off in front of the children. Um, yes, it's already a bit ruined, but still standing and now preserved. Not the property. I'm sure um, we've got Antonio talking about his standing stone um, again there this morning. So what's the price of this one, Carl? This is a tad over a million euros, uh, 1,025,000. Um, yes. you know, you've got a huge piece of land already a fantastic property on there with potential if you wanted to do more to it i mean i think it's perfect the way it is yeah uh, and, and i know a little about the area so i know i mean i, I say this a lot because as i drive around the country and i discover new places i always think oh god i could live here but i have been going to that area for the past sort of three or four years with my my uncle sort of stays nearby he comes for three six months at a time i yes. love the area it's a fantastic place to live you know and a great place to raise a family too so yeah. yeah, well said. Absolute beauty there. Okay, have you, and what have you got in town? Have, have you got many rentals? Because you're known as, as well as all these lovely testimonials that are coming in. You are the man who fixes it for people to live uh, and find a rental in, in, in the capital. That's a, a big area of specialism for you. <laughs> have you got much on your books at the moment? And what's happening in the city? I mean, a lot of what I do is, I mean, property-wise for rentals, I don't have anything at the minute. I have three properties lined up for sale. Uh, we're just sort of uh, working through that. Uh, it's sort of a process for, for, for the sellers and, you know, the, when, when the time is right. So I will have some properties to sell there. With regards yeah. to rentals, a lot of what I do is actually in the, in the buyer's agent kind of mold of things, helping yeah. people find a place, supporting them through it. I was watching the show just a little before I came on with Veronica talking about um, scams and all this kind of thing. And this is where finding somebody to support you if somebody like me, great, you know, or somebody at least, you know, if you don't want to use an agent, somebody's been through the process, there are perils and pitfalls, you know. Um, so, um, yeah, a lot of what I do is actually in the buyer's agent sort of sphere. I will go out and find you the place uh, and then we'll use our in-house lawyer who is excellent. I know Veronica was saying some agencies, maybe the lawyer isn't doing their due diligence, maybe dotting the I's and crossing the T's. I can tell you now, um, our lawyer... God, you can be a pain in the ass sometimes. She really does like to dot those eyes and those teams. But it's good. It's good. We all know that it's there for a reason. And that's why 
uh, we work with the best in the business. So yeah, if you're looking for, so a we're rent- talking about liability with a large corporation, right? This yeah, is a global exactly. corporate. Some of these little mom and pop shops all over the place, <laughs> they come and go, you know. And yeah. so when you can, you know, hang your hat with somebody like his, that's a, a global brand, they're mm-hmm. not going to lose their whole yeah. brand over a couple of shady I mean, deals. I give like just a view kind of into the background of why. I mean, if you if you look into the rental market and you find a, a landlord listing directly, maybe a great person may have good intentions and it may all work out. But if you find something that's listed with an agency, what that agency should be doing um, is doing all those background checks in advance, you know, um, and making sure that everything is, is um, you know, that who owns the property owns it. That's one of the big ones, you know, which is what so we're said you should be doing, right? Yeah, so, you know, do and, that. And it's not standard here. It's just not standard here. Yeah, you know, so it, it, it's important, you know, to, to do that, for sure. Okay, excellent. All right, so there's a little bit of an update from both of you in your respective parts of the country and a little bit more of a, an overview of the property market. here. So do you want to talk us through these, uh, Veronica, as well? So these are just, you know, a few things I was researching. And then, of course, you know, you, you pointed to them, but, you know, the, and this is when you if we're the press release. I think they typed over one third quarter of 2023, 6 February. Um, they're talking about what's happening. And we're always a little bit behind, right? Because by the time they get the data from the banks and everywhere and aggregate it together, you're getting this is a current press release, but mm-hmm. it's February 6th. But this was about the third quarter. So you kind of look at that and you just look at it, the medium house price. Um, at how much it is per square meter. It's going up. Whether it's year-on-year growth or 10-year growth, even if it drops a little bit, you're looking at data that just continues to go up, you know, and here's construction production and the Eurozone. And anyone can look up this data. It's on, I mean, it gets a little in-depth, but I can like geek out on this stuff. (laughs) And um, this is where I think we're getting some of the information from, the from Europe going, oh my gosh, Portugal's still going up and everybody is stagnating. We'll look at why that is. And again, go back to that last slide. That one there. And here, when we look at this, this is what we talk about in the past. The darker um, zones are the more um, high price zones. Mm-hmm. When you're looking, you're looking at coastal properties and properties that have a lot of economic um, uh, activity. So Lisbon, you have a ton of people coming in right now. So of course you have a huge supply um, and demand issue. So the prices are going to keep skyrocketing because you have all these people coming in for jobs and nowhere to live. And this is where you can pretty much guarantee, and I never use the word guarantee, in the future rents go up unless there's a rent um, hold on, um, you know, a rent built where they can't increase the rent, right? Exactly. So and here is the statistics that, you know, when you're looking at what's going up as far as pricing in apartments and housing and when you're looking at price per square meter, be aware that your price per square meter is different from apartments than houses. It's more expensive in apartments because apartments tend to be in areas where um, you're in the city. Right. So they're going to be a little bit smaller, but they're going to cost more then let's say if you had a country house. So looking, you know, at the difference between all dwellings, which is your blue line, and then your apartments and your houses. Anyone can look at these statistics. I don't want to dork out on you, but the reality is, is, is that any 10 year cycle, I don't care where you look, it's done this. And you could be in a this, you know, when you look at the a bottom spike, well, that's when you buy. That's not when you freak out. If prices drop, buy it's the same with stocks everybody yeah. buys when the market's high buy when the market's junking on itself yes yeah well said um if i may can i just put those images up in the portugal club please the do time please see, those are all press releases yeah so i just did screenshots because i would read through page, pages and pages of the european data of our local data and whenever i read stories i go back to the footnotes and back to the source so mm-hmm. whenever you're reading any article especially if it's online, they'll usually quote the source they got the statistics from because they're taking and just captioning it down. Same with I did with the Idealista story. They were the ones telling all about the, the scam. I just condensed it into you know a couple minutes and put That's my cool. own words on. But you have to go back to the data. 
Yep. Okay. Uh, Eric K okay, always appreciates your real estate info, scholarship, and research. Okay, so we've got about five minutes left. What would be great? I mean, we, we, this, it's been very information rich this morning, and you are um, known and, and, and acknowledged and appreciated here as people who help people um, find their dream home here in Portugal. Can we condense it down into a quick sort of one, two, three steps? You know, if people are, are watching and thinking, okay, I'm ready. I, I, I hear what they're saying. I'm ready to do this. Uh, what are those maybe first three steps that the priorities people should uh, make, take, uh, Veronica? Do you want to start with that? Do you want to so move to Portugal first? Thing to do? Yeah, you, you, okay, you, you, so moving, not buying. Um, I, well, I can, can, we, can we do both? Can we, you know, what, what's, what is the, what is the step plan with that? You know, you want to move here, obviously you've got to get your visa sorted out, but then you've also got to look for somewhere to buy or rent. So what's the right way to go about that? What are you saying to people? Well, in order to get a visa, you have to have already purchased or have a rental contract, right? So um, obviously you need to have, have decided where you want to live. You yep. need to put in place how you're going to live there. You need to absolutely reach out to your CPA there and here to figure out your financial plan, because, you know, if you sell something there versus here, um, you know, how that's going to net out, if you're going to have any capital gains hits, any of your stocks and bonds that you're going to cash out to use. You know, we have people who say, hey, this is my home forever. I see that my investments aren't making money in um, in the stock market. So I'm just going to not have a mortgage and put that into a house here. So if it's different for everybody. You know, you need a place to live. You need to talk to your financial person, your lawyer, your real estate agent. You need to figure out what your plan is going to be. And then the next steps are, of course, relocation and working on that visa. So selling your house back there. I tell people all the time, sell your house with a rent back provision. It saved so many people because you're not moving two or three times. You can That's sell your gem. house. That's a gem. Tell us more about that. So the rent back provision I've done on three of my own homes. Now, it may not be legal in every city and every county. And that's where you talk to the person that you're selling with back home. OK, yeah. so or wherever you're selling. So I even had one house in Newport Beach. The market was skyrocketing, which means I knew I could sell right away. Multiple offers, crazy, you know, money. But how long was it going to take me to buy something? So was I going to have to move from that home? to a rental or somewhere in the meantime to find the next place because I didn't want to do a contingent purchase, which you can do here and somebody did here. But what happens in Portugal is you're now liable. You're going to put a deposit down. If your house doesn't sell, you could lose that deposit. The attorney right. will write that in, but that doesn't mean they'll accept that offer. Yeah. So what it means is you can stay and live in your house until whatever you've specified in a contract. The second contract goes behind the first contract. The second contract is your lease. So I put in my lease for moving here six months because I'd already identified where I wanted to live here. And in my lease in um, in uh, Newport Beach, I put in until I find a place to live. So a what? contract is two parties in consideration to bind the contracts along with your signature. Correct. So when you're talking <laughs> the legalities of it, you're talking about if it's legal in your area, not every area allows a rent back provision. I put in it until I found and closed on a place to buy. And it took about eight months to buy my place in LA. And the guy was like, are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? And I'm like, no, I'm still looking. Once it was closed and I had that close move in date, I did one move instead of multiple moves. That's so clever. That is so smart, isn't it? And you, you, you're not creating extra stress for yourself. You, you, you nope. move when you found somewhere that suits you. That's fantastic. And, and you haven't missed out on a sale. That's the other important part of that. Exactly. So people did that and they're like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. Because when we were talking three years ago, we knew the Fed, you know, in America was going to increase rates. They told us in, I think, by November. And so we knew the next year they were going to increase rates and they did it all of a sudden. I think it was March. They did it three times and significantly, which kind of caused the market to go down. And it, it depends on your location, but caused yeah. your, the market to go down. It was harder to find a buyer. And that's where we had somebody here who thought, oh, I'm just going to wait. It's no problem. Everybody wants my house. If it hadn't been for our agent here who knew the owners and said, please, 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 they're really trying to sell their house. And then I kind of talked to them the agent there didn't list it the way that he could have, you know, the way that our MLS works. He didn't put the oceanfront first as the first photo, because when you pull up in the MLS, you get one photo in the description. 
he had like a wall. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we have this oceanfront place. <laughs> They're pulling up 50 for sale right now. And you've yes. got a wall when you have an oceanfront. So sorry, I'm wordy. It's, that's, it's no, that's so really, that's gold dust in there. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much for that information, Veronica. Thank you for being here this morning and great to have you back in the country. Uh, over to you, Carl, what would you say? I think I do this every time I do this show. I sort of agree with Veronica. I mean, you've really, yes. you, you know, she, she's she's so great. I mean, you've really got to plan it out. I mean, first of all, obviously, you've got to start with the visa. Um, look into that, sort of plan for that. And then definitely, you've got to speak to your financial people. Because if you make the move and you've not thought it through, you may be liable for different taxes. You know, she's talking about capital gains and things like that. It can sting um and just getting advice just reading things on facebook really isn't enough that may be a starting point to sort of get get you into the process you know yes. i made some mistakes when i came here um you know just by reading things online and thinking it'll it'll all be good small things but things that i would have changed if i'd actually looked into it with a professional you know so definitely do that um you know it, it's got to be in that order basically if you don't do it in that yeah, order then you set yourself up to fail for sure I can't believe it. Just chucking everything in the camper van and driving over. <laughs> it's not the right way to do it. <laughs> well, if you're going to live in your camper van, you know. I can't believe we did that. Right. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you both. You so had a home. What, you had a home. But we, what, in our camper van? <laughs> yes, that was a home, right? At least you had a roof over your head. Well, that's and true. And if they like, said, get out here, you could drive to spain or somewhere else it's true yeah the, with the japanese camper van though it tells you it's like a four birth but that's for little japanese people not for us <laughs> <laughs> europeans with two adults and two kids anyway that's another story for another time um thank like you my very flight. Much, <laughs> yes exactly like that it's like being squashed in an airplane um carl hyde Verica, thank you so much for being here this morning. have a great day and uh, thank you so much for all the information and fun we've had this morning thank you so much ciao ciao and uh, we'll see i'll see you tonight we're doing mortgages tonight with uh, vera from mortgage direct um so understanding mortgages in portugal that's the expats portugal webinar this evening and a dream team session at nine take care bye for now and have a great day ciao ciao